Um, so our institute vision is really to empower farmers and their communities to respond to climate variability and change, take advantage of opportunities, and lessen their impacts on the climate. And so we're working on developing partnerships, like with the USDA Climate Change Hub, um, developing and delivering information and training, uh, providing policy recommendations and just updates on research. Mike mentioned we were in Washington, D.C. last week. That's an example of just getting out and talking to our constituents and our policymakers, serving as a clearinghouse of information. And this is our website down there. So we are partnering with the Northeast Climate Hub along with Penn State and University of Maine and all the land grants in the region. And we in particular at Cornell, we've been working on doing a stakeholder literature review of all the views of farmers and extension educators about this issue of climate change. And that's been really informative and we've learned a lot over the last couple of months. Um, we hope that next year we're gonna be doing a survey of farmers to take it to the next step. And really, there's not been a lot of surveying of uh, farmers in the Northeast, except for Maine did a study and uh, three other studies. Whereas men, the other regions of the US, we have much better knowledge of what, climate, uh, what farmers think about this issue. So we do know from one study in the Midwest, probably the biggest study that's been done so far, about 5,000 Midwestern farmers were surveyed and 66% of them believe climate change is occurring. 31% um, are still uncertain and only 3.5% of farmers in the Midwest don't believe climate change is occurring at all. But it's interesting though, of the 66% that believe uh, climate is changing, there's still a lot of uncertainty and this is where we need to provide science-based research about human causality. Because these researchers found that farmers who believed in, that climate change is occurring and attribute that to human causation are much more open to taking action on both adaptation and mitigation. If they don't believe that it's caused by humans, they're much less willing to take action to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. So we don't yet know what farmers very well in the entire Northeast think, but we have done some research at Cornell and we're gonna be publishing this soon. So we might mention this earlier, we have done a survey of residents throughout New York State. It was a random sample and this was done in 2014 and we found that 82% of New Yorkers believe the climate is changing. And we were really surprised by this high number, um, but I think it's an indication that things Perceptions are changing, and as an, as an educator and working with educators, this is evidence to me that this topic is not something that we need to shy away from. It's really the time to start working on it because we have strong support behind us. So we've launched this new program called Climate Smart Farming. We intentionally wanted to take it away from climate change and um, I was at Empire Farm Days last year and had the Climate Change Institute, and I could see farmers or the public would see that and just like walk the other way. <laughs> so, learning from that, we have renamed this, this initiative as Climate Smart Farming. And it really, um, there's a similar initiative in Europe, Climate Smart Agriculture. So it's really got three goals. The primary goal is increasing sus um, sustainability, farm incomes and productivity as well as reducing greenhouse gas emissions and increasing farm resiliency. So what, um, there's like a similar process, I don't know if you've heard of the Climate Smart Community Program in New York State. It's a voluntary initiative and it's like a stepwise process that municipalities can sign on to this initiative. And we sort of modeled the idea for climate smart farming on this, where you would work with a farm to set goals, figure out what their energy use or greenhouse gas emissions are, and then make plans for reducing emissions or adopting new resiliency practices. Um, 
And then some of the steps through this process, it's a voluntary process, can be just working with farmers to get them to adopt best management practices like working on soil health or um, looking at pooling in, in barns. Um, importantly, one of the Climate Smart community, the last steps, is really informing and inspiring other municipalities. And I think um, this is key to what we're trying to do is having farmers inspire other farmers. So getting the farm leaders, the, the leaders in the industry on board, and then this is always the way Extension has worked, um, getting them to share what they're doing. And so uh, about two or three years ago, we started with very little funding and just this idea that we would capture some stories of farmers talking about the impacts that they're experiencing and what they're doing to adapt. And so over the last couple of years, like last summer and this year, we've been editing those down to about five minute video clips. We now have um, 10 to 12 little videos that extension educators can use. Um, farmers can go on the website and see what their peers are thinking about this issue. So we have dairy farmers, um, a large uh, grain farmer, um, a very large uh, compost operation in the Hudson Valley, like 1,200 acres. Um, so a variety of farms, a grape grower, um, wine producer in Ithaca. And the idea behind these, and we've seen in the research, is that this issue can be incredibly polarizing. And one way that researchers have found a way to kind of bypass that is to have peer-to-peer -peer education. So very conservative municipal officials in Florida are willing to talk about sea level rise and flooding because it's impacting their communities. And they're not going to talk about it in terms of climate change, but they're going to talk about flooding and what can we do to make our towns more resilient. And so this is the idea that we can work with conservative audiences, maybe conservative, um, by having farmers talk to farmers. Um, what we've learned in doing these interviews are just some really interesting quotes um, where we're seeing, definitely farmers are seeing impacts. Um, we use this quote a lot and it's in one of our videos. Um, and you can't make something like this up. It's a great quote. Um, and a farmer in the Hudson Valley says, as a farmer, you can weather the storm, but you can't weather continuous storms. So definitely an acknowledgement that things are getting more variable, more uncertain, and we need um, adaptation help. So the newest thing that we've done is to launch a Climate Smart Farming Extension team. And Kim is here in the room, and she's going to speak to you about how she's incorporating climate change into her work in the dairy industry. But we've hired a little bit of time of six educators. These are the best and the brightest in our system. Um, Kim has a doctorate and three, three of our six do. Um, so we have um, a focus on dairy and field crops, um, viticulture and vegetables and IPM, small fruit and economic development. We also heard from Educators like him, like, I can't work 50% of my time on this issue. I have a job description, but I can, but I'm looking for a little bit of grant funding and I can work 5 to 10% of my time. And maybe that's all we need because we just need her to be willing to learn more information and start getting those messages into what she's already doing. Because we are also heard this morning, um, I think one of our educators this morning said, we're not, we've tried to get people to come, producers to come to an entire talk on climate change, and they're, they're not going to come. But if it's about drought, or about flooding, or about heat stress, um, they'll come and we can talk about, well, this is how this is going to continue to change over time. Um, so these are the specialists that we have on our team. We are hoping there will also be a resource for extension throughout New York State and interact with their other regional team members. Um, these are the issues that they're letting us know they're already hearing about from the farmers they're working with. Um, definitely heavy rain events 
is a key one, but also uncertainty. Um, our goals are to incorporate climate into existing programming, serve as a resource for the state. Um, we want to get, you know, they're writing articles all the time. We just want maybe one sentence at the end that talks about how this is in line with long-term weather trends and future climate projections. Um, we're going to, we are at a lot of events. We're going to be at New York State Ag Society and Empire Farm Days. Um, with our researchers, we are developing decision support tools and we really want, we need actual farm input to those and extension input because we can't just develop these things and then expect people are going to use them. So that's a large part of what our team will be helping us with. Um, and this is the website that we're working on. It's climatesmartfarming.org. It should be up within the next couple of months. It's going to be an iterative process. It's never probably going to be finished. So we'll start with a few tools and then we'll keep adding them. We want this to be a resource for extension in the entire region. Um, so this is a mock-up of how the site is going to look. And you know, primarily one of the first things people will be able to do is click on a tool if they're interested in frost risk or growing degree day tools and they can be used on a phone or on a website. And we're also trying to do more um, following up on the wrestling coach by just getting information out there. So if you are on Facebook, if you would like this program, it's Climate Smart Farming. Um, we have a really great postdoc and wonderful undergrad um, research assistants here, and they're helping us get information out and get these accounts up. Um, I think that's the last slide. Terrific. Thanks, Allison. Thank you.